In the field of paleontology, the private fossil trade is a subject of controversy. Many paleontologists are against it, citing issues with how many fossils being sold are poached, usually from countries such as Mongolia and Brazil, as well as how the industry is about selling to the highest bidder rather than the scientists that seek to study them, due to it being driven by monetary gain. This trade has reasonably resulted in custody disputes, such as the notorious case of Sue, one of the largest and most complete Tyrannosaurus rex ever found. This T-Rex was collected in 1990 by the Black Hills Institute, a leading organization in the business, on the property of Morris Williams, who seemingly agreed to sell the bones to them for their future museum. Two years later, the FBI suddenly raided BHI's headquarters and seized the dinosaur claiming that it had been stolen from federal property. Williams' ranch was inside an Indian reservation which he was also holding in trust to the US government for tax relief. To sell anything found on his property, Williams required the consent of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, who he had previously worked for but had completely neglected to inform. The ensuing custody battle only grew more complicated when Williams himself, motivated by its lucrativeness, began claiming the T-Rex for himself, insisting that he never sold it to the Institute, which ultimately convinced the court to deem him the owner of the tyrant lizard. Victorious, the duplicious rancher soon acquired permission from the Bureau to sell its highly coveted remains. When Sue was placed on auction in 1997, the Chicago Field Museum with financial backing from Disney World and the McDonald's Corporation bought the dinosaur for $8.36 million, the highest ever paid for a fossil before the sale of Stan the T-Rex in 2020 surpassed it at $31.8 million. While the ownership dispute over Sue received nationwide media attention, there is one dinosaur specimen that faced similar legal troubles but on a smaller scale exclusively within the young earth creationist community. Nicknamed Ebenezer, this Allosaurus, a large carnivorous Jurassic dinosaur, currently resides at the Creation Museum near Cincinnati, Kentucky, a polarizing museum that teaches visitors that dinosaurs like Ebenezer were killed in the deluge of Genesis. We believe the account in Genesis concerning creation and the flood. And so when we look at evidence, uh, we're looking at it from perspective of uh, whether what you observe in the present confirms or otherwise what we believe happened according to the Bible's history. 10 feet tall and 30 feet long with a 56% complete skeleton, Ebenezer is not only unique for being housed in one of the largest creationist establishments in the world, but because it has possibly the most complete skull of its genus found thus far at 97%. So how did the source of what was described as the quote, scourge of the Christian science community become a creationist best friend? Since its establishment in 1979, the religious right has waged a culture war to prevent what they perceive as the moral erosion of American society. Among the prominent issues that this predominantly evangelical movement are opposed to are gay marriage, abortion, and commonly anything that contradicts a literal interpretation of the book of Genesis, such as evolution in deep time. Survival of the fittest, if all be true, and every man a liar. It was this desire to perpetuate these values that led to Vision Forum's foundation in 1998 by Doug Phillips, a former attorney for the Homeschool Legal Defense Association and the son of Howard Phillips, one of the founders of the religious right itself. Seeking to raise a homeschool generation that would transform the 21st century with the message of Jesus Christ, the ministry's prominent teachings included biblical patriarchy, a movement controversial for discouraging women's education, the pronatal theology quiverful which condemns contraceptives, and a reverence for America's founding fathers who they believed founded the country on Calvinist principles. What we want to do is to build the child up and build the parent up and to point them to those fundamental principles, love of God, love of Christ, love of country, appreciation for the past. In November 2001, the relatively young Vision Forum ran an advertisement in their 2002 catalog for a fossil dig near Colorado. Costing $995 per person, this four-day event they would be hosting consisted of a tour to the National Dinosaur Monument Museum, a fossil hunt in Cowboy Canyon, and finally, 
The titular dig which was to receive assistance from excavators of the Creation Studies Institute, or CSI. In May of the following year, their website proudly proclaimed that their advertised dinosaur dig, revealed to be in the Skull Creek Basin of Colorado's Northwest, had yielded an extraordinary find, an Allosaurus. Described as being a nearly 70% complete skeleton that the site claimed, quote, may prove to be the best preserved and most fully articulated of its genus yet to be excavated. The article states that it was discovered by a home educator by the name of Dr. Bruce Bellamy at the last minute of the trip. In addition, other prehistoric megafauna reported from the same locality were a large 100 foot long sauropod that they quote unquote, presently believed to be of the rare Ultrasaurus variety, unquote, in a Stegosaurus plate. The ranch these dinosaurs were found on, which Vision Forum claimed was described by National Geographic to be, quote, one of the 50 best fossil dig sites in the world, unquote, was private property owned by a homeschool family who sought to use it for creation science. Unusually, instead of the Creation Studies Institute as previously advertised, the trip was supervised by an unheard of ministry called Creation Expeditions. Consisting primarily of the DeRosa family, the team was praised by Doug Phillips as a quote, top-notch team with hundreds of digs behind them and more than a decade of experience. You are about to be part of a dig which is going to uncover, hopefully, uh, we believe the, the full remains of which we currently have 25% of the Allosaur. Yeah. Yes. We have 25% of an Allosaur. This is historic. It's phenomenal. We do not have the skull. I'm putting a $250 reward on any boy, any girl, anybody that finds the skull. If you find the skull, Mr. Phillips will write you a check for $250 right there. And believe me, you're getting it. Re I'm getting it real cheap. <laughs> As promised at the end of the article, Vision Forum would release a documentary about the dig called Raising the Allosaur narrated by Winston McArthur, who suspiciously sounds exactly like Doug Phillips. The Colorado Morrison Formation is part of a vast geological graveyard of bones that is world-renowned to dinosaur hunters. One of the greatest evidences that we have for the biblical account of creation is the very existence of a fossil record. Providing the obvious young earth creationist message. I think it will be difficult for us to ever fully calculate the tremendous death toll that evolution has caused in the 20th century alone. Uh, certainly, evolution was behind the eugenics theory of Margaret Sanger, which was adopted by Adolf Hitler and applied to the execution of six million Jews. Certainly, evolutionary thinking uh, was behind the movement on the part of the American and British scientific community to go to places like Australia to hunt and kill and stuff human beings called Aborigines and to bring them back to their museums as examples of lesser species species of man, uh, but if ever there was a devastating impact on our culture, it's through the abortion movement. The film emphasized the alleged professionalism of creation expeditions. You are with a very special and unusual family. Here is a family that works together as a team. Mom, Leah, daughter, the two boys, Mark and Peter Jr and um, uh, Pete Sr., they work together as a team, they're home educators, they're Christians with a vision to do what thousands of Christians should be doing but very few have a vision for, which is to take the Lordship of Christ to an area which has been occupied by the enemy. And that's what's been done. It has been occupied by the enemy. And they've come in here and they've spent their life getting their fingernails dirty, their hands dirty, their elbows dirty, learning, thinking, and becoming a crack team of um, archaeologists when it comes to uncovering bones. In fact, you were looking at, this is a Colombian mammoth skull here? Yes. Okay, you're looking at a Colombian mammoth jawbone. Uh, this is the largest Colombian mammoth jawbone ever discovered. Additionally, a brief history of the homeschool family's fossiliferous soil and how the DeRosas became involved with it is presented to the audience. Dana and Brenda Forbes have graciously opened their home to Creation Expedition, who is providing lunch on this occasion. It was approximately one year ago that Dana was surveying his property with a scintillator, a special device that picks up the radiation given off by bones, when he discovered a six-foot Camarasaurus femur sticking out of a bed of sandstone. Over the next few weeks, more and more dinosaurs began to reveal themselves throughout the property. Well, the story on this property is a miracle. Uh, 
when we first went out there, uh, the property owner had major, major museums chasing after him. He had paleontologists coming out there. He had the, the Grand Junction Museum, the Museum of the Rockies. Uh, he had National Geographic actually came out there and did a shoot on the property and rated it as one of the top 50 places to, to come see dinosaur bones. The Denver Post put it on, on, on their publication. It, it's been all over the place. Um, he had proposals uh, for people to come in to offer him big money for the property. But God in his providence uh, got the property to us. Uh, he's a Christian. He wanted to see it to be used for creation science, to be used for God's work. And we were there at a time that was critical. And God uh, provided a way where we could work with the ranch owner. Towards the film's conclusion, footage is shown of the dramatic discovery of the publicized Allosaurus skull. I just uncovered a vertebrae right here. This is a uh, long line of uh, tail vertebrae running in this direction. And uh, this is the first one that we found. Do you have your gloves uh, on? Yes, last year we uh, clustered up uh, some right here, but okay. this is the first one I found today, so we're going to follow it back and see if we can't find any more. With the discovery of this vertebrae, a cautious Mark DeRosa travels to site number one, where he quietly tells his brother that they may be on to something. They may be on their way to finding the skull. What, Dan? Dr. Bruce Bellamy and his son are two of the men who have been laboring unsuccessfully at Site 2 all day. But they join Mark and Doug to prepare for this last-ditch effort to find the skull. The men have only one hope of finding the skull at this late hour, and so Site Leader Mark DeRosa suggests they turn to God in prayer. God our Father, with uh, this amazing beast being so rare, rarely found in the world of men, and Father, with so many uh, using it against uh, the name of the Lord Jesus to advance the, uh, the lies of evolution, we do pray, Heavenly Father, that you would give us, in your mercy, an opportunity to bring forth the skull for the glory of God. We pray, Father, that Lord, if the skull is here, that you'd help us to carefully remove it, and Father, to preserve it, that it would be a great blessing to the people of God and use for your glory. We thank you for guiding Mark and guiding Bruce to the spot, and Lord, we ask a blessing on it, especially as we enter uh, this uh, dangerous time period, or difficult time period for the We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Within moments of breaking dirt, a remarkable discovery is made. Dr. Bellamy has struck the neck vertebrae leading right up to the skull. They found their allosaur. Further excavation will expose teeth and skull and 70% of this magnificent animal. But they find something else, something they didn't expect to find. In and around the skull are deposits of partially fossilized and unfossilized organic material. The full articulation of the bones indicates the ground has not moved since deposition, and the organic material was laid down at the time of the Allosaur's burial. But the existence of the material clearly points to a recent deposition, since it would not remain organic over vast periods of time. The search for the Allosaur is over, but God has answered their prayers and given them yet another devastating evidence for rapid burial, recent deposition, and the biblical flood model. But the adventure of a lifetime was just beginning for the intrepid team of Allosaur hunters. Before them lay the mammoth task of transporting more than 2,000 miles by truck this fossilized monster. They're all too cognizant of the fact that a serious mistake in the transportation could cause irreparable damage to the valuable skull. It's a dangerous journey, but the fragile Allosaur survives to be unloaded and prepped for its skeletal resurrection at the ad hoc paleontological laboratories of the Vision Forum in San Antonio, Texas. The documentary and its coinciding merchandise proved to be highly profitable for Vision Forum. By 2005, the film studio responsible for shooting and editing the movie claimed that it had sold over 10,000 copies. Seeing the first excavation as a successful coup d'etat against evolution, Vision Forum would continue annual digs on the Forbes Ranch that Creation Expeditions was said to have acquired at the end of raising the Allosaur. These further excavations would focus on the sauropod, which was now being referred to as a brachiosaur, 
and the purported Stegosaurus in 2003 and 2004 respectively. The homeschooled DeRosa brothers became subject to frequent promotion and praise by Doug Phillips who envisioned them as the creation science equivalent of the Larson brothers, the co-founders of the Black Hills Institute. Phillips was so enamored with these self-proclaimed paleontologists that he declared them future leaders belonging to a quote, new breed of boy that was going to set the world on fire for the glory of God, unquote. As a result, they and their father would be invited to speak at Christian conferences across America, one in which they claimed that NASA had once done an hour-long webcast of a prior dig of theirs praising their work for being good science. Their ongoing preparation of the skull would even be featured on the San Antonio local news channel Kent's 5 for a special on creationism. In addition, the acclaimed creation expeditions had received from the Allosaurus documentary had gotten so great that a homeschool family in South Dakota contracted them to extract the fossils found on their property, which expeditions soon utilized for future tours like with their profitable Skull Creek digs. The excavation of the land, located in the Hell Creek Formation, yielded a reportedly 85% complete Edmontosaurus at expeditions named Ezekiel, noteworthy for being found with skin impressions that they alleged had retained its pigmentation. In the same vein as raising the Allosaur, Ezekiel was set to have a DVD released about its discovery, but controversy had grown in the background regarding the events depicted in the previous documentary. Mentioned in passing throughout 2003, Doug Phillips wrote of what he described as hucksters and charlatans within creationism actively seeking to discredit the DeRosa brothers, which he deemed an act of Christian persecution. The origins of this unscrupulous campaign, according to Phillips, had been started by a self-styled expert seeking personal gain that had gone as far as to take legal action against the DeRosa family. The DeRosas themselves responded to the allegations by comparing their boys to the Biblical David. These creationist detractors being likened to David's brothers taunting the boys' mission to take down the Goliath that was evolution. Despite these naysayers, T.W. Easton, a noted detractor of Forum who has written extensively on the Allosaurus controversy, attributes the success of the disputed dinosaur DVD for allowing Phillips to create the San Antonio Independent Christian Film Festival an ambitious organization that sought to foster a Christian film industry to counter what Phillips described as the quote, humanistic religious worldview of Hollywood elites. However, on October 29, 2004, Vision Forum abruptly sent out a private email newsletter announcing that they would be suspending sales of raising the Allosaur as well as all events with the creation expeditions. Citing ethics-based issues that had come to their attention throughout the year, they assured readers that these suspensions would be lifted once the aforementioned issues were appropriately addressed by expeditions. Roughly a week later, a polemic letter disputing the factual accuracy of the documentary penned by Terry Bay, a writer for the fundamentalist ministry Focus on the Family, titled, Villainy Behind the Mask of Virtue, would be made public. Explaining that Vision Forum had made the movie to get out of debt, Bay asserted that Joe Taylor, fossil caster, excavator, and the eccentric owner of the creationist Mount Blanco Fossil Museum in Texas, was the one actually responsible for excavating all of its remains with his team. Field representatives from Creation Ministries Answers in Genesis and Creation Studies Institute were also said to have assisted the Mount Blanco crew on a prior dig on the Forbes property. On the contrary, Dr. Bruce Bellamy, the man credited with discovering the skull, had merely just discovered one of its neck vertebrae, with him and the rest of the volunteers being oblivious to its identity. Even more egregious was that the owner of the ranch himself, Dana Forbes, was the first to find the Allosaurus's remains, not Mark DeRosa as expeditions had proudly boasted. After the Allosaurus's fossils were sent to his museum, Taylor was threatened with legal action to give them over to a makeshift laboratory owned by Vision Forum. Not wanting division with what he considered a fellow brother in Christ, Taylor gave in to these vicious demands, which resulted in financial and emotional hardships for him. Bay closes his scathing criticism of Phillips by denigrating this self-described moral voice of homeschooling as a quote, mean-spirited, dishonest man who uses his legal skills to bully those that dare to get in his way, hiding behind a mask of virtue. 
These accusations levied at the DeRosas and Doug Phillips only grew the following year on July 7, 2005 when a letter attributed to Dana Forbes regarding the documentary was posted online to Joe Taylor's own personal blog. Excerpts from this message read as follows. Joe Taylor came out after the Vision Forum people left and conducted the excavation of the vertebral column including the skull. The DeRosas were clearly involved, but they did not direct the removal of anything from the site. Joe did. Doug Phillips and Vision Forum had no rights to any of the bone material excavated. The DeRosas, Joe Taylor, and my family all had a stake in the Allosaur. Let me repeat, those most responsible for quote, making the film, based on its given title, received no credit whatsoever. Additionally, certain necessary others involved in our family as well are not listed in the credits. However, homeschooled boys and girls out on an adventure with their parents are said to quote, raise from the ground what appears to be the most complete allosaur ever found in the history of paleontology, which is a gross overstatement of its bone percentage, including the monster's giant skull. Other major problems with the film include the comment that I found the bones with the scintillator. The awareness of bones on the property came from a local old timer and my actual discovery of the first bones came as a direct answer to prayer. We were never involved with the Grand Junction Museum or the Museum of the Rockies. One of the world's largest dinosaur fossil museums did express an interest in partnering with me, but that is a far cry from quote, major, major museums chasing after me. The video certainly conveys the idea that the DeRosas and Doug did it all. I communicated with Doug Phillips about the problems with the film, but he never connected with me. Later, when I questioned Doug, based on the Allosaur documentary, about his qualifications to host a Christian film contest which cited integrity as a major standard, I received angry accusations from his establishment that I was simply looking out for my own gain. Amid the growing allegations against them coupled with the end of their partnership with Vision Forum, Creation Expeditions acquired their own laboratory in Fort Lauderdale, Florida to serve as their new headquarters. Though Expeditions continued their excavations in the South Dakota Badlands along with their usual services such as the Manatee Swim, their commercially successful digs in Skull Creek were removed from their website without any given reason. After several years of hard labor, the restoration of the Allosaurus' skull, which they now named Ebenezer, would be completed in November where it became publicly displayed at their newly established base of operations. With plans underway for a museum in the future, it seemed as if Expeditions was thriving in the absence of Phillips' frequent endorsements. But the drama surrounding this prized Mesozoic predator would only increase in ferocity. On December 11, 2006, Ministry Watchmen, a blog dedicated to exposing the Christian patriarchy movement, posted an article about the Allosaurus controversy that featured an interview from Joe Taylor himself. In this scathing recollection, Joe reinforced that the DeRosa boys were far from the seasoned paleontologists that the so-called Pharisee Doug Phillips had promoted but were merely trainees of his that had only gone to two dinosaur digs at the time the documentary was filmed, both of which were supervised by him. In addition, he further revealed that another film had been made titled The Truth Behind Raising the Allosaur that showed footage and stills that proved his side of the story. Unfortunately, this was suppressed by Phillips who felt it went against a mediation settlement held between him and the Rosas that Joe affirmed it left him in financial ruin. He additionally gave his thoughts on why raising the Allosaur was pulled, claiming, I don't think Doug will be telling on the DeRosas because he doesn't want them telling on him. This interview, along with other disparaging comments Taylor had made online, would result in a response from Ed Watt, the lawyer who represented the DeRosas in the mediation that was posted publicly on the Vision Forum website on December 30th. Watt clarified that his clients had sold the Allosaurus skull to an undisclosed third party, though they were permitted to display it, for $200,000 in order to pay Taylor and his brothers $124,000. He then asserted that none of the money made from the sale had gone towards the salary nor the labor costs of the DeRosas, being instead used for their attorney's fees, ministry expenses, and a payment on a prior loan to the third party. The family's silence since then was due to the settlement agreement also demanding a non-disparagement clause for all parties involved, 
which meant that Joe Taylor's recent remarks were in violation of the agreement. While Vision Forum's representative did attend the mediation, Watt clarified that he himself did not represent Doug Phillips nor his ministry. However, he would admit that he was responsible for suggesting raising the Allosaur should be pulled from cell, stating that it was, quote, not because of any inaccuracies or falsehoods in the video, but because instead of bringing glory to Christ, it had become a lightning rod for criticism and divisiveness, unquote. Watt concluded his response by announcing that the DeRosas had initiated arbitration proceedings with the mediator of the 2004 case. He expressed confidence in this decision, proclaiming, We believe the arbitrator, when presented with the evidence, will find the true facts to be very different from what Taylor would have the world believe in his internet and other writings. Until then, I would ask everyone who comes across any of the writings by Taylor or others on his behalf to reserve judgment and not to jump to conclusions based on unilateral gossip, hearsay, and embittered self-serving accusations. Afterward, Vision Forum issued their own statement denouncing Taylor's actions while assuring readers that the organization abetted raising the Allosaurus integrity, though it would still remain unavailable. Just as Watt foresaw, the arbitrator ruled that Taylor, who had no legal representation during this meeting, had violated the non-disparagement clause of the 2004 mediation over 20 times, totaling to a sum of $100,000 in liquidated damages, each comment alone costing $5,000. Faced with more hardships, Joe attempted to contact Phillips in April asking for reconciliation, but he received no reply. On July 16th, Joe's attorney filed seven objections to get the mediation and the arbitration overturned. With a date set for October 15th at Lubbock, Texas, it seemed like a textbook case that would finally alleviate the troubles of the financially strained creationist. However, according to friends of Taylor's, Ed Watt successfully filed for a change of venue to Austin arguing that the case should be held in the same city as the mediation and the arbitration that came before it. This caused the litigation to be moved two weeks ahead of its previously scheduled date, leaving no time for Taylor to make arrangements nor have any witnesses travel to the new location. Even more detrimental to Taylor, the Austin judge felt that the lawsuit should not be heard at all and validated the arbitration on October 2, 2007. The Allosaurus that terrorized the sauropods on the Morrison floodplains had fully adapted to preying upon Taylor's well-being. Well, I really like those rock hammers. They're pretty fun to work with. And uh, I've been working with some shovels and chisels, but I think the rock hammers are really the funnest. They dug down from right about here, I guess, and then exposed this part here. Yeah, boy, I wish you wouldn't have done that. I know. When Pete came back, we started to make a proposal, and we titled it Dragon's Den. Joe was trying to get the Drosas more experience. It became a group gathering of different representative ministries who were going to work together to proclaim God as the Creator. It's obvious to me that uh, the Drosas are not honest. I thought he was representing CSI. I have uh, documentation that there were times that I thought he was, but he was really representing Creation Expeditions. They're taking money out of my pocket. They're taking tools from me. Joe maybe not having a, an immediate family on hand, maybe being too trusting to people, believing what they would say. There was no signed contract between CSI and, and, and Doug Phillips. We promised him a tour, and we were going to do that tour. 